Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, I have a lesson for you on preparing for a grade seven state end of year assessment. This is part A, and there is a second video that will follow that is part B. These are MCAS questions from the year 2018, and it's the released portion of the exam, and it is the no calculator section. So this is the state of Massachusetts end of year exam, but they are applicable common core standards for any grade seven state end of year assessment. And what we do is the state of Massachusetts release is about half of the questions that students are asked at the end of the year. And half of those release questions are no calculator questions. So this first video, part A, will be the no calculator section and part B represents the calculator section. So this is what every grade seven student should know and be able to do by the end of their seventh grade year. Again, these represent common core grade seven standards and they're from the Massachusetts MCAS 2018 released questions. Again, the questions you'll see in this video are not calculator permitted. The students that take this exam are given a reference sheet. They're allowed to refer to it during any part of the exam, any question that they have, they can open this up. The top half, which you have here, is the conversions. So these are the conversions that the state of Massachusetts does not consider that a grade seven student should know. It's something that they're allowed to look up and refer to this reference sheet. The bottom half of the reference sheet has these formulas. So students do not need to memorize these area formulas or these circle formulas, volume, or the surface area formula. They are allowed to refer back to this reference sheet at any time. So I've created a chapter or a bookmark for you in the YouTube video that you can come back anytime during the video and refer to either of these slides. So here we are, this is the first question. What I'm gonna ask that you do while you're doing this is that I'm going to read the question and then I am gonna ask you to pause and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. So here we go. Charles bought a box of fruit that contained only oranges and tangerines. There were five oranges for every three tangerines in the box. There were 20 oranges in the box. Which of the following proportions can be used to find X, the number of tangerines in the box? Go ahead and pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So the first thing I want to note is this is a ratio. I've been given the number of oranges for every number of tangerines that are in the box. So I write that ratio as five over three. To make a proportion, I note it has to be an equivalent ratio. So I want to know oranges to tangerines. So the second item they gave us was that there are 20 oranges in the box, but we don't know how many tangerines are in the box, so that's our X. So our proportion that we came up with was D. Five oranges to three tangerines will be equivalent to 20 oranges out of X tangerines. What is the value of this expression? Six plus negative nine subtract negative four. Please pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So first I'm going to rewrite subtraction to add the opposite. This is the rule that I teach my seventh grade students. So we're going to write six, add negative nine was given to us, but add the opposite, which is opposite of negative four is positive four. So writing subtract negative four is the same as add four. So now it's not so confusing and we have repeated addition. So now order doesn't matter. So I am gonna add my positive values. Six plus four is 10. And now I need to add the negative nine. 10 and negative nine are one. So the answer is C. Braden adds one third cup of flour into every mixture every half of a minute. What is the rate in cups per minute at which Braden adds flour to the mixture? Go ahead and pause and come back when you're ready. 
Welcome back. So I know that this is a ratio that we need to turn into a rate. A ratio becomes a rate when it has a denominator of one. So I want to know cups per minute. So I'm going to do cups over minute. I have one third of a cup, half of a minute. This is what we call a complex fraction, which really is just a division problem. A fraction bar represents a division symbol. So let's rewrite it. One third divide by one half. Now we just need to divide. One third multiplied by the reciprocal. So instead of dividing by a fraction, we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal. You may have heard keep, change, flip. So now we have one third multiplied by two, multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and we get that our rate is two-thirds of a cup per minute, C. Here we are, have a carton of pens that contains four blue pens, three red pens, ten black pens, and one green pen. All the pens are the same size and shape. Harry will select a pen at random. Which of the following best describes the probability that Harry will select a green pen. Go ahead and pause now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So the first thing I wanna do is identify the number of green pens all over the total of all the pens that I have. So I have one green pen out of 18. Four plus three is seven, plus 10 is 17, plus one more is 18. So there are 18 pens in all, and one of those 18 pens is green. So I have a one in 18 chance of drawing a green pen. And this is not impossible, it's unlikely. So our answer is C. Emma noticed that the new admission fee for the zoo is 50% more than last year's fee. She wrote this expression to represent the new admission fee where F represents last year's fee. F plus, in parentheses, 0 0.50 multiplied by F. Which of the following expressions shows another way Emma could have represented the new admission fee? Your turn. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So I'm gonna change this from admission fee to French fries because I think you can relate to French fries more than an admission fee. So let's think of it this way, that this F represents, there's an invisible one there, but it represents one French fry. F is one F. And then this multiplication sign is just there to confuse you, if you ask me. So we can rewrite this to be 0 0.5, which means half of a French fry. So if your plate has one French fry and a half of a French fry, what do you have all together? These are like terms because they're both French fries. We put them together and we get 1.50F, which is the same as 1.F. You have one and a half French fries. So our answer is A. So often I ask my students to change this to something more familiar than them. If the Fs are confusing you, make it an object. Here we have a multi-part open response question. So when students take this, they have to show their work or explain their work, and a state grader is going to look at their physical work, not just typing a number into a computer. So Gloria has two number cubes with faces numbers one through six. She will roll each number cube once. You're asked to make an organized list to show the sample space for rolling the two number cubes. So make sure you show your work and then come back and hit play when you're ready. Go ahead and pause. Welcome back. So here is my organized list, reminding you I have two number cubes and I'm gonna make my organized list. Mine looks like a table. I know that if I roll a one on the first one, the second one could be a one or a two or a three or a four or a five or a six. And I did this. Now if the first cube's a two, that can also have each of the six numbers for the second, for a three, a four, a five, and a six. So this is my organized sample space right here. Part B, how many possible outcomes are there in the sample space for rolling the two number cubes? Please pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. 
So I referred back to my sample space and I identify that there are 36 different possible outcomes. So if you count up each one of these squares, there's six by six, there's a total of 36 different outcomes. Part C, Gloria wants to roll the number cubes once and get a sum of eight on the top faces. List the outcomes in the sample space that have a sum of eight. Please pause now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So here's our sample space. And in my sample space, I've highlighted all the sums of eight. You can see the way I've organized my table that this diagonal represents all the sums of eight. So I'm just going to do what I was asked and make a list. You could get six and two, five and three, four and four, three and five, and two and six. Remembering that six and two and two and six are two different roles because this is number cube one with a six and number cube one with a two. So think of it when you're rolling two number cubes that even though sometimes they're both white, maybe you have two different colors and then you can identify that how they would be different. Part D, what is the probability that Gloria will get a sum of eight on the top faces when she rolls the two number cubes once? Pause now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So I'm going back to my sample space and my highlighted sums of eight. So my probability is one, two, three, four, five out of my 36 outcomes would be a sum of eight. So Gloria has a five out of 36 chance of rolling an eight when she rolls two number cubes. This is in simplest form, so I'm good. Remember, you have to simplify your probability ratios. Next question. The first number in a pattern is eight. Each of the following number is found by subtracting nine from the previous number. What is the fifth number in the pattern? Please pause now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So the first number in my pattern is eight. So I'm gonna start there. Now I have to subtract nine from eight to get my next number. Eight subtract nine is eight add negative nine, which is negative one. So the second number in my pattern is negative one. I'm gonna subtract nine from negative one, which is negative one add negative nine. Remember, same signs add the absolute values and keep the sign. So negative 10 is my third number. Negative 10 subtract nine is the same as negative 10, add the opposite, same sign, add and keep the sign, negative 19. One more, that was the fourth number. The fifth number is going to be negative nine subtract nine, which is the same as saying negative nine add, negative 19 add negative nine, which is negative 28. There you go. Fifth number is D, negative 28. What is the value of this expression? 12 divided by 0 0.48. Go ahead and pause now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So I'm gonna set up long division. I have 12 divided by 0 0.48. So a lot of students have trouble with this, but 12 goes underneath. 12 divide by 0 0.48. If you kind of walk, talk your way through it, it helps. So before I can begin, this needs to be a whole number. So in order to do that, I'm going to move the decimal point two spaces to the right, which means I need to take this decimal place and do the same thing. So it's going to go from here to there. So that means I'm really going to have 1,200 divided by 48. Now I'm ready. 48 does not go into 1 or 12, so I'm going to have to go over to 120. It goes in twice. 2 times 48 is 96. 120 subtract 96 is 24. Bring down the 0. And then 48 goes into 240 five times. 5 times 48 is exactly 240 and there's my remainder of zero. So my answer is 25. Ava and Zhao each swam a two lap swimming race. Ava took 31.49 seconds to finish her first lap 
and 30.03 seconds to finish her second lap. Zhao finished her two-lap swimming race 1.76 seconds faster than Ava. What was Zhao's total swimming time in seconds after she finished her two-lap race? Pause now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So the first thing I know is that I have to calculate Ava's swim time. Her two laps were these values. When I add them together, nine plus three is 12, two carry the one, I get four plus one is five, one plus zero is one, and three plus three is six. So Ava's total swimming time was 61.52 seconds. Now it tells me that Zhao swam 1.76 seconds faster. When she did this faster, that means she had less time. So it took Ava longer because Zhao was faster. So if she did it 1.76 sec seconds faster, I need to subtract that from Ava's time. So I have the 6152 and I'm subtracting the 1.76. So I've gone ahead and borrowed. So six, that's why I've highlighted this, crossed out the six and made it a five. This went from 11 to 10 because I put one over here. And instead of 15, it becomes 14 because I'm going to add one to here. 12 minus 6 is 6. 14 minus 7 is 7. 10 minus 1 is 9. And 5 minus 0 is 5. So 59.76 was Zhao swimming time. So remember that students need to remember either it's a cross country race or a track race or a swimming race. But we, uh, I see a lot of times on these state assessments that they want to understand that faster means you do something faster. It's less time, not more. Next question, which of the following is equivalent to this expression, 40 divided by 1 fourth? Go ahead and pause now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So what I did was I know that this is dividing, which means multiply by the reciprocal, or you may have heard keep, change, flip. So I'm going to rewrite this to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 4. So the expression that is the same is B, 40 times 4. There you have it. That is the no calculator questions for the grade seven end of year assessment. This again was just from one year of the state of Massachusetts, but they are common core standards and should help you prepare for any state or end of year grade seven assessment. Please come back to here and practice with part B where you can use a calculator. So that's the magic of math. I hope you enjoyed this video today. I hope you'll please subscribe to my channel and register for notifications for upcoming videos. Please give me a thumbs up and most of all, have a great day.